Uh, Waiheke is a sort of a magical island off the coast of Auckland and we're on the very far side um, so it's the wildest side of Waiheke and we're surrounded by bush. Uh, Waiheke houses, uh, you know, almost off the grid. There's no sewerage system, uh, no water system. So those elements you provide, uh, the power goes out quite often. So, you know, it, it, you kind of have a sort of a resilience in these houses. We called this, this house Waikopua because that's the name of the bay originally, uh, and that would mean still water in Māori. This site used to be a sort of uh, colonial farming site. Um, they originally cleared the kauri trees, and that, there were no native trees in, the, in this part of the thing, except for this one stand of, of Nikau. Mixed it between the sort of planning rules and the stand of Nikau meant that we kind of positioned the house, so we were a little bit forward of where we were supposed to be, but it was a, kind of a way of protecting that existing stand. And some of them are sort of 80, 80, 90 years old, so, and it, really formed the basis for the whole design moving forward. The original house, we were sort of, you know, referring to the kind of classic New Zealand black weatherboard batch, but with a sort of modern form. And with a sort of sculptural approach as well. So, you know, the aluminium louvers, the way the stair is sort of angled up. Uh, and so for the new part, we kind of just repeated those um, same manoeuvres. So this, the louvers are exactly the same. Um, the double height space is similar. Even the detailing of the way the weatherboards come together. But just brought the new into it and just a more refinement, I guess. The main pavilion is really the living area. That's where, where the kind of people come together. Um, and then there's uh, bedrooms above. The guest house, which had the original boat shed underneath, is uh, kind of a very separate area and quite lovely. The, the new pavilion with the, uh, is again kind of echoing this, this one with the double height space. Uh, you walk upstairs, there's a bunk bed and then there's two beautiful bedrooms and, and a bathroom. Our relationship with Dan didn't just go through to here's a set of drawings and, and build it. Like Obviously this, this project evolved along the way and it, it really helped having him at the helm, making sure that everything did fit in and that's how we've kind of ended up with such a a seamless finish on everything. With this house, you know, it, it's, it is this idea of, of sort of building in, in, a, in a stream bed. So the driveway is a real focus for arrival and the buildings are sort of spread um, around that space. So as you come down, if around the final corner, the a new addition is placed there, but it's guiding you down and you can immediately see this sort of shaft through to the water. The driveway, um, you know, there was a little bit of back and forth. We, we uh, had some samples presented and I was really keen to kind of reflect the, the kind of colour of the beach as much as possible. So I'd actually uh, gathered up some uh, stones and shells from the beach and, and with a bit of ochre um, pigment and we cast our own little sample of what we wanted uh, to be reflected. Uh, and, and the idea of putting these timber elements within the driveway to break up what would have been a kind of quite monolithic element. Uh, and, and, you know, we worked back and forth and we've sort of ended up with the perfect colour and the perfect sort of uh, design for that. A special part of this project was the custom garage door. So we've got a garage door that closes onto a 103 degree corner, but then wraps around and tucks in on a curve so that we've got access for the client to pull his sea legs up the driveway and then reverse it into the sea legs garage. Yeah, a campsite is a, a way, sort of an informal living method. The idea of having these separate sort of accommodation units placed in the landscape, it gives a sort of informality while a sort of a maybe an urban house has a very formal approach and a very formal uh, public-private interface. Here all of a sudden we could, could completely switch that out uh, and it, it worked really well you know people would greet you on the deck as opposed to sort of there being a door or anything like that so so it's just a throwing away of those sort of urban conventions. To make the most of the light, but also to kind of control uh, the harsher light, and also really mostly for the sort of sculptural kind of view of the uh, building from, from when you look out from sea, uh, we incorporated the big sort of louvered fins. They're fixed, but they're fixed at such an angle that it just sort of stops the really harsh light coming in at, at the right time. So it's a sculptural device, but also a kind of light control. The material choice for this build was really good. Like we've come back now six, seven years later and it's all silvered off and weathered really well, which had to work down here since it's just a beach house and we've got a quite an intense environment with all the salt spray zone and everything. So I think 
Daniel's done a real good job kind of choosing the materials to make that happen. The black of the weatherboards is, is great because it just fades into the bush. You literally can't see this house from the water. The kind of the reddish brown um, of the schist was sort of echoing the local stone. Uh, and it just goes so beautifully with the, with the green. Uh, so, you know, you see these amazing sort of moments where, where, the, where the bush is overhanging those walls, and it's fantastic. At DASH, we really want to go through and make sure that we're focusing on working alongside these architects and collaborating to really get these top-end finishes across the line and, and getting to work on these projects that are just stunning architecture that are, you know, going to last forever. I think the project will continue to evolve and every time I come here there's, you know, it's, it's greener and lusher. Uh, over the years it'll just be more and more sort of uh, bedded into the landscape and, you know, that's what we want. And,